Hello? You looking for a good time? You got any money? Huh? You wanna have a good time? Come on, you got any money? <laughs> Hooker, <laughs> released in 1990 and is directed by Frank Henenlotter, who is also behind such films like Basket Case, Brain Damage, Basket Case 2, Basket Case 3, and Bad Biology. And this movie has an amazing all-star cast of James Lawrence, Patty Mullen, and Louise Lasser. And the reason why we're talking about this amazing movie today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my longtime subscribers and contributors for this channel, Dr. Camp. This was, uh, you give me the best recommendations ever. I'm pretty sure you've given me some of the best horror ones that I had last year with Night Killer, I believe. And you just keep adding to your greatness of recommendations, sir, with this film, Frankenhooker. So thank you very much. If any of you want to be like Dr. Camp and send over just amazing movies like this, click on the PayPal link that is in the comments and in this video and make a small donation and send your recommendations there and I'll get my review of it done as quickly as I possibly can and give you a little shout out here on the channel. Jeffrey Franken is suffering from the sudden loss of his fiance Elizabeth by an automatic lawnmower. <laughs> gonna say it but saying it is so much better oh okay back to the plot synopsis we can do this and because he is a man of science he has developed an estrogen based blood formula that allows unanimated tissue to come back to life but after the accident jeff was only able to scrounge up elizabeth's head and a couple of arm parts so jeff needs to find another body that he can attach some of the elizabeth body parts to and reanimate her and live happily ever after with his fiance i left a lot of stuff out of that plot synopsis because I, we're gonna go through this entire thing this movie is freaking amazing. So if you've never seen Frankenhooker before, or if you're just craving to watch it and you don't want to be spoiled by anything, stop this review right now, go and watch this movie, because everyone needs to see this ridiculous thing, and then come back and we'll go through all the great parts together. You've been warned. Now before we go into this movie bit by bit, I do have to say, when it comes to these exploitation, just terrible concept of movies, I'm actually kind of impressed with the production value of this film. The set pieces, the location, the lighting actually feels like effort was put into it, as opposed to other movies that I've watched, like Night Killer, where it just looks like a couple of people stumbled across a room at a building and said, hey, that's going to be where we're going to be shooting. And we're not going to set dress it up at all. We're just going to shoot there. Here, there's a lot of intentional set dressing and a lot of intentional props and set design that is all over the place. And I appreciate that. Why this guy needs to have so many framed pictures of his ex fiance on his wall, I don't know. But everything that you need to have on a wall to convince you that this guy loves this girl and also is a brilliant scientist is there and I appreciate it. I also love that he lives at his mom's house but his mom only comes in to like pick up his dirty laundry <laughs> to do it for him but we never see her again. She kind of just hangs out in the living room I guess while he's carving away in his room and out in his garage which is his lab and you, <laughs> you have these hours that pop up to do the whole Frankenstein thing. Oh god, this movie is freaking great. Let's get into it. I took endless notes on everything because I wanted to make sure that I hit on every aspect of this movie that made me laugh and put a smile on my face. I didn't realize it until like 30 minutes in that I'm like, okay, I need to stop. I need to go back, watch this again, and take notes because we're going to be clipping in and out here, me talking and me showing you proof of the ridiculousness that happens in this movie that I'm talking about. The first note that I have here is what's the first rule about turning on an automatic lawnmower that pushes itself? You never stand in front of it. <laughs> 
great. Elizabeth is at her parents' birthday party and she got her dad an automatic lawnmower and she's showing it off. She's so happy. And this is how you turn it on. And this is how you make it go forward. And this is how you turn up the speed on the blade so that you get a good cut. So when you want it to go, you just press this. You're on your way, Chuck. Don't stand in front of it. But Jeffrey, the ever so wise Jeffrey, is seeing this unfold and is going, No, Elizabeth, no, hey, don't stand in front of the lawnmower. Lady, don't stand in front of the lawnmower. No, Elizabeth, no! I love his accent in this movie. It's like a discount Christopher Walken, like a terrible Christopher Walken accent. He's trying to be Jersey or whatever. It's going between Jersey and Walken in this movie. And I freaking love it. So Elizabeth gets cut up and everything. And then we get into like a little kind of montage to show that time has passed. And we see Jeff has this kind of diagram drawn up on his desk of all of the inner wirings and all of his plans to create a cyborg Elizabeth body for him to build. And he feels the need to not have dead space in the dialogue, so he's throwing out a whole bunch of, like, scientific phrases in there to make him sound smarter. <laughs> He's throwing out just, okay, so we got this here, I need this, I need this amount of wiring, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of wiring, and then, uh, E equals MC squared, yeah, that's true. Like, why, why did you say that? Why did you say E equals MC squared? What does that formula have to do with anything in this body, this centerfold body that you're building. Well, if I take this amount of wire and put that much electricity and then I divide by pi, I think that'll work out. What? And as he's doing this, he's playing the videotape recording of the news report of the terrible accident with Elizabeth. And in there, we realize that, oh, he's stolen a couple of body parts because the police are pretty freaked out over some of the body parts aren't showing up after the whole accident. But, yes... Apparently parts of her are missing. She's just one big jigsaw puzzle. Jeffrey's got him in his garage, in a cooler, in a pool of, of purple water that apparently is a blood serum that is estrogen base, so he can only reanimate estrogen base materials. So he can only bring women back from the dead. You know. I love this movie so much. I love, I love my life. I love my life a lot. So he's still doing his little drawy drawy things and talking about all the wiring. And then his mom comes in and his mom wants him to just move on with his life. He's got to move on. I talked to Carol from the grocery store and she's looking to have a date with someone. Don't you want to go out with someone, Jeffrey? No, mom, not really. He just suffered a terrible trauma by watching his fiance get chopped to bits by an automatic lawnmower that he invented, Ma. <laughs> he, needs to, he needs to go through some serious therapy before he moves on and gets another girl. And then later on that evening, Jeffrey has a nice little dinner with the severed head of Elizabeth, because that, I guess that just makes him happy. So he takes out the head, puts it on the dinner table, and, like, he's made spaghetti, and we're there drinking wine, and he, like, drink <laughs> pours the wine into her mouth. Because, you know, I'm having a nice dinner with my fiancé. And then, and then he goes through... <laughs> This is one of the best parts. He goes through a little presentation of the different bodies <laughs> that he wants to put her severed head on. And it's all like Playboy centerfolds. <laughs> He's like, hey, what do you think about this? I mean, nice and voluptuous. I kind of like it. And then flips to the next one and, oh, this one's pretty good too. I mean, the boobs are not as big as the previous ones, but... Hey, it still works for me. And he goes through and it's something in his brain is saying that, oh, she's not liking this. I wonder what <laughs> about it that she would not like about it. But he's going like, what? What do you want me to do, Elizabeth? Come on. The guy is just freaking insane. But he's so entertaining and I love it. So in the quest to figure out, okay, where do I get this amazing centerfold-like body to put my fiancé severed head on top of? Thinking, well, it's got to be a hooker. I got to go downtown and get some hookers. Oh, but I'm going to need the cash. And one of the best lines ever he has here. There's a place across the river where there are thousands of women anxious to sell their parts. With no questions asked. Of course, with the right amount of cash. I do have my Christmas club account. 
Good thing I got my Christmas Club account. Well, hopefully you're withdrawing after October 31st, because that's for a holiday club. That's when all of the automatic and early withdrawal fees are taken off of it, and you can withdraw from it. Otherwise, you're going to be paying a, probably a sizable fee, depending on the bank that you have. I work for a credit union, so I know all about holiday clubs. So just to hear him say, I got a Christmas Club account with a lot of money in it. It makes you wonder, once you see how much money he had that he withdrew, Drew and he has in that envelope, like, what was he saving that money for in a holiday club account? You make no interest on that shit. It's just something that you put money aside so that you can buy Christmas gifts for. It's a pretty shitty deal. Moving on with the movie! But he goes downtown and finds a couple of hookers that, you know, are warming up to him and making them feel him good. And he's saying that, hey, I, I want to get a whole bunch of hookers together to have a party so that he can investigate and measure out and see which body parts he wants to actually take to fit this perfect centifold of a body that he wants. Then he's introduced to the big daddy pimp of the streets in that area called Zoro. And Zoro's gonna hook him up because Zoro, yeah, we're friends now. Zoro and Jeffrey, we like it. We like the money and we're friends now. So Jeff is now back at his lab and he's getting everything ready and he sees a news report from this TV personality talking with this advocate to help women on the streets or to help hookers. Apparently she called her organization Hookers and it stands for something. I can't remember what it is. It's just so ridiculous. Yeah, I run a company called Hookers. Hooker, isn't it? It's called Hold On To Our Knowledge Of Equal Rights. And if you run that film, you'll get a hint of what it's like on the streets for these women. But the huge problem on the streets is not that the hookers are actually on the street. No, 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 no. The problem is that hookers go mad for crack. So if you have crack, they just go crazy. But Jeffrey is sitting there and gives the greatest line I've ever heard in the history of movies. She's right. This crack shit's killing them. This super crack will get the job done a lot quicker. Super crack. Super crack. This movie's the best. So he gets all the hookers into a room and he gets to play doctor and he's taking the measurements and the hookers are like trying to have sex with him but it's pretty clear that he doesn't want to have sex. He's there to do the measurements and figure out, okay, who's, uh, whose body part am I taking? And I mean, you're only hookers. No one's gonna miss you. And the hookers start getting angry at this and start to assault Jeffrey and they look into his bag to get the money and they find the bag full of super crack. And they go crazy. They're like wild animals because apparently that's what hookers are. Wow. Holy shit! What's this? Holy shit! John! It's not my job! Oh, holy shit! Look at this! Wait, wait. Put that back! That's supposed to be for the winner! Look at this, girl! The party ain't over yet! But this super crack, for whatever reason, makes people explode once you take a little hit of it. So all of these hookers take a hit of the super crack. Therefore, we get an amazing body part exploding sequence where all of these hookers start exploding throughout the room. <laughs> Zoro's sitting downstairs and waiting for his bitches, but his bitches are coming down. So he goes up to check on them, knocks down the door, and one of the hookers <laughs> explode right in front of him. It has an amazing little Three Stooges sequence. Here it is. <laughs> Kunk. <laughs> so Jeffrey rounds up all of the hooker body parts, takes them home, puts them in the whole animated cooler, and he, then he starts assembling all of the parts that he has that he likes. And before he puts Elizabeth's head on top, he has this amazing moment with the severed head that I wrote here rivals the poor Yorick scene from Hamlet. And I'll never let anything ever hurt you again, I promise. For as long as I live, you'll be safe. Whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa! Okay, it's all right. No harm done. Everything's okay. No blood. Nothing's broken. 
because it does. So he assembles him together, and then we get right back into the whole Frankenstein myth, where Frankenstein raises the monster up during an electrical storm to get the reanimation and all the volts into the body. And as the body is being risen up from this amazing, huge-ass tower that is in the floor of this old lady's garage in the middle of the suburbs, is raising up, and Jeffrey looks up to Elizabeth and says... Good luck. Good luck, Elizabeth. Another one of my favorite moments in here. I had to make a note of that. So Elizabeth is now alive and is awake, but because Elizabeth has a severed arm of a hooker and a leg of a hooker and a forearm of another hooker, apparently all of these hookers' brains and personality are now in Elizabeth's brain. So the second the cloth comes off and she comes down after being reanimated, she goes... Want a date? Going out? Looking for some action? Need some company? No, wait, wait, huh? It's, it's Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Got any money? Money? No, I don't, I don't have any money. I feel like that's how I would be as a hooker. I would just walk around town like that. Want a party? Jersey boy here wants a twosome! Holy! Need some company? Yep, that would be me. So she goes off downtown, and Jeffrey is still there in his lab. He's knocked out, but when he wakes up, he has this realization moment that, Oh! Oh, God! Elizabeth is a hooker! Oh, God, no! She wants money. She wants my money. Oh, my God, no. Oh, no, 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 no. wait a minute. You're not gonna go back there! Elizabeth! So he sets off to find Elizabeth, a big, tall, purple woman on the streets of New York. Come on, what? All the while, Elizabeth is off having sex with a whole bunch of random customers. A lot of pretty creepy people, too, so it makes me want to visit New York City even more. And I love her physicality here. I love that the decision was, because she's just been electrocuted and has come back to life, that now she needs to jerk all the time. And her face is constantly twitching because there's so much electricity going in her brain. It's, uh, you got any money? Now as she's going around and sleeping with a whole bunch of these guys, we're figuring out that, oh, because she has all this extra voltage inside of her, when she gets all hot and bothered and she's in the middle of the act, all of a sudden the guy starts becoming electrocuted and then he explodes. See, that's, that's symmetry and storytelling there. <laughs> and it's funny watching them realize that they're being electrocuted and they're gonna die. <laughs> now Elizabeth is out sleeping with people, Jeffrey is out looking for her, and then we have Zorro, who is at a strip club bar because his life is now shit because all of his bitches didn't come down the stairs and he has no bitches left. But then he starts hearing Elizabeth with all of the little things that she's saying because, again, her, the consciousness that she has is not Elizabeth. It's the body parts of all of the hookers because that translate to, to, to brain stuff with just forearms, you know. But he hears Elizabeth and he's like, wait, my bitches said those things. You must be all of my bitches. He even walks up and confronts her and is like, Hey, I know you. You got my mark on your arm. Where'd you get this arm? This ain't your arm. Where did you get this arm? This ain't your tattoo. This ain't your arm. Where'd you get this arm? This is one of my bitches' arm. Where did you get this arm was a line said out loud in this movie. Mm -hmm. But Jeffrey finally finds her and saves the day, takes home Elizabeth to his lab, and is putting on the whole bolts and everything to keep her from not electrocuting people. Apparently that helps. And with him doing that, that actually brings the actual consciousness of his fiancée, Elizabeth, to the forefront. And she's standing there th saying, okay, hey, what happened at the party? Did my, did my father light the lawnmower? So the couple is reunited again, and it is wonderful. Wonderful and it's glorious. Elizabeth is standing there asking, well, Jeffrey, how did you do this? This is amazing. Which brings us to the greatest line I have ever heard when it comes to playwriting or screenwriting. Here it is. I brought you back, Elizabeth. I brought you back to life. How? Oh, a bunch of things. I got it all written down over there. How? 
Well, a whole bunch of things. I got it written down over there. That just explains everything. That is amazing storytelling right there. How'd you do it? Oh, it's just, it's over there. It's a bunch of things. It's right over there. Now pay attention to that line because that's going to come back into play in about five minutes. And Jeffrey even goes on to explain that, oh, this blood-based formula is estrogen-based. Therefore, I can only reanimate women. I can only bring women back to life. As if for some reason that makes him less of an amazing scientist. Stand back, Jeffrey. You are able to bring someone back to life, regardless of its estrogen base or testosterone base. Who gives a shit? You bring back unanimated tissue. Dude, be proud of yourself. Now all throughout this explanation, Zoro, the pimp daddy, has followed them to his garage lab thing. He takes a knife and he machetes the crap out of Jeffrey and Jeffrey is dead. But amazingly, in the greatest deus ex machina that I've ever seen in a movie, all of a sudden the cooler with the extra hooker body parts that Jeff put in there hours before starts to move and starts to animate and tips over, and all of a sudden we have these mutilated body part things moving and crawling across the floor, and they take Zoro, and they bring him into the cooler that apparently is like another dimension because we never see Zoro again, or these weird, creepy, mutated body part people things. Now here comes the ending. Here comes the amazing twist ending of this movie. So for Elizabeth to save Jeffrey, you know what she needed to do? She needed to look at those notes of all the things that were over there. So she does and brings him back, but because the only body parts that were in the vicinity to attach a head to were the female hookers, now Jeffrey is a female hooker. So, you know. One of the first things he asks is, where's my Johnson? Whoa! What? Because that's what I say whenever my penis is missing. It's like, whoa! My Johnson! It's gone! What? Where's my Johnson? What did you do to me, Elizabeth? And then the movie just ends. Like, there's nothing after this. Is there a sequel? Is there more of this movie? Because I felt like there wanted to be so much more of this movie that we did not get, and it's a freaking shame. The whole news anchor bit about saving the hookers from the crack on the streets. What happened with Zorro? Is he now a female hooker slash daddy pimp thing? And do Elizabeth and Jeffrey live happily ever after? We'll never know because the movie just ends with Jeffrey realizing that, oh, he's on the body of a hooker now. All of that stuff aside though, you take all of my disappointment of this thing not continuing aside, this movie is incredible. And I was thinking, where where do I find this movie? I have no idea. Looking at the plot synopsis, I'm like, oh, this is on Tubi. I know this is on Tubi TV. Sure enough, Tubi TV, Frankenhooker, right there. Tubi TV, it's an amazing website that is absolutely free to check out a whole bunch of movies like this, these exploitation films. Oh, God. Oh, God, it's so good. I'm gonna give Frankenhooker five out of five mammograms. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. Thank you so much, Dr. Camp, for recommending this movie to me. I need to have at least one of these movies every single Halloween for me to just show clips of, to show you, for those of you that don't believe me, of what I'm watching. I need to have this, so thank you very much. So guys, have you seen Frankenhooker? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before, and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I'm released next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.